Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners, Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 51. Please reply by half verse. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. And cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned. And done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak. And upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth. A sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me. 
and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness. That the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. And blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again. And sustain me with your bountiful spirit. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but he was appointed by one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because he was of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. You, Lord Christ. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Please be seated. You can't tell, but I'm smiling right now. (laughs) 
I have heard a voice that came from heaven. It feels weird to say that in today's time, but it's true, I have heard a voice. But that's kind of the middle of the story, so maybe I should start back at the beginning. Kind of like today's gospel reading, the voice is in the middle of the story, and also this gospel passage is in the middle of the story. The part where things are still kind of moving slowly, but we know the energy is about to pick up. Almost like driving across country. I know intimately what that's like. The GPS kept saying, in a hundred miles. But then suddenly it shifts and it says something like, in 10 miles, in 9.9 miles, in 9.8 miles. Today's gospel reading is like that shift from a hundred miles to 10 miles. The end is coming in about 10 miles. Next Sunday is Passion Sunday or Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. We know it's coming. We're anticipating its arrival. And so is Jesus. And so is God the Father. After all, in today's gospel, Jesus says the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And the voice from heaven says, I have glorified it. My story, the story about hearing a voice, well, it begins like every other story at the beginning. I was born and raised in Virginia. My parents are both educators, so school was very important to me. Growing up, I learned that answers come from textbooks and classrooms, from teachers and homework assignments. I spent a lot of time studying. After high school, I kept going into undergraduate. At that point, I was going to be a ballerina or a news anchor or something in front of people performing. I started dancing as a child and always thought of it as my future until it wasn't. Until in the middle of a ballet class, in the middle of a grand leap, I fell, my ankle giving out from underneath me. Apparently, six hours of dance every day at age 17 isn't a good idea. Sadly, my ballet career was over, and so was my gymnastics hobby. They went hand in hand for the overachieving high schooler that I was. So I found something else, a different path, an exit ramp to a new highway, this time international work. I was going to be a diplomat or an aid worker, and after graduating with a bachelor's degree in intercultural and mass communications, a switch away from dance, I joined the Peace Corps because at age 21, I was going to change the world. A month after graduation, I left for the country of Georgia over by Russia to lead girls' development camps and teach English in a small and isolated village. I was the first American most of them had ever met. I learned Georgian. I could still be fluent if I practiced a little bit. And I lived with a host family. I practically became Georgian until my service came to an abrupt end, being evacuated from a war zone. It's funny, this gospel passage speaks to me on a lot of levels. When the crowd hears the voice, some of them think it's thunder. And I've had that experience too. I've heard something that I thought was thunder. You see, laying in bed late at night in my village, I heard thunder, and was seeing lightning out my bedroom window, but that ended up not being the case. What was lighting up my bedroom, glowing red, the sound that I thought was thunder, it was the bombs going off outside. Definitely not the same as the voice of God, and yet it kind of had the same effect on me definitely changed the course of my life yet again. Being evacuated from a war zone will leave a lot of unanswered questions. Why me? Why this? Why do people hate? Why do people kill? You know, those really hard questions that I'm sure we've all struggled with at some point. So I was shipped back home and forced to find my own answers. And I will admit, at the time, God wasn't really part of my life. 
I mean, God was always kind of part of my life, like on the sidelines, but certainly not front and center. Perhaps some of you have had those times in your own life. Prayer was not really something I did, per se. And yet, returning home, for some reason, I thought of two places where I might find answers to those questions. The first, of course, the classroom. A middle school science teacher for a mom and a communications and design professor for a dad, I was definitely going back to the classroom. And second, the pew, where all of you are sitting right now, the church, the quiet and stillness of the nave and the community of a parish like you all offer each other. I'm sure you know this, experience this, love this here in St. Philip's. So I was still hooked on changing the world, too, so I decided on a master's in peace operations would justly prepare me to bring about that world peace that I had so hoped for, and also Sunday mornings in the Episcopal worship service, Sunday evenings teaching the youth group. So study, pray, teach, repeat. I sort of stalled at that point. Life was good. I was working in nuclear nonproliferation. I was doing high-tech science stuff that I thought was super cool. I had friends and family nearby. Life was definitely good. I was back at that 100 miles to go point of the journey again. Cruise control and my favorite song on the radio, singing at the top of my lungs. And again, I'm sure most of you know that feeling. Perhaps it wasn't quite stalling for you. Perhaps it was just where life was headed slow and steady, a career, a family, a house, and a quiet, comfortable life. That's what I thought I was going to get. But of course, that's not how my life works. I'm pretty sure that's not how Jesus' life works either, and today's gospel certainly kind of indicates that. So here's a little bit of theology. Our lives are like mirror images of Jesus. If we are created in the image of God and Jesus is God, then of course we are created in the image of Jesus, like a mere reflection. We're not exactly perfect replicas of Jesus, but we're close, which means Jesus is also close to being exactly like us. If Jesus is called to wander the desert for 40 days, so are we. If Jesus is tempted by Satan, so are we. If Jesus is called to obey God the Father, and even with doubts and fears and anxieties, he still follows through, well, so are we. I will say that scene in the Garden of Gethsemane is is always one of the most moving scenes in Scripture for me. When Jesus goes to pray, knowing that the time has come, knowing that no longer is he foretelling his passion and death, like in today's gospel, but he is about to live it. And Jesus goes to God the Father and says, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will be done, but yours. If you are willing, take this fate, this future from me. Yet not my will be done, but yours. I realize I still haven't gotten to the good part of my story, the part where I hear that voice. It came in the evening, a few days before Christmas in 2011. I know the exact minute just about. You see, I was working in my lavish office, floor to ceiling windows, overlooking Washington, D.C., the Georgetown Waterfront National Cathedral, located just over the Potomac River. I was on the Virginia side. I was quite proud of all of that. I was very full of myself. I was about to get into my car and drive home a 20-mile commute, which I knew would take more than two hours, most of which would involve sitting on a highway. Like I said, I was full of myself, and at age 25 and already rapidly rising in the nuclear science industry, I paused, leaned back in my chair, put my feet up on my desk, literally, and then... I heard that voice, a voice, and I felt someone in my office with me. I heard a man's voice. It said, you will be a priest. 
I fell out of my chair backwards and hit the floor. Much like a Tom and Jerry cartoon, I literally hit the floor. The crowd in today's gospel reading thought it might have been thunder. I thought it might have been my boss. A brilliant Jewish man with multiple science and politics PhDs in multiple languages. I thought he would definitely have been just pulling a prank on me, so I ran into his office and asked. And It wasn't him, but he knew. He knew an angel had spoken, or maybe it was God directly. It was definitely a voice for my sake, a command for obedience, a change in the GPS from 100 miles back to 10. Exit on the left. I will admit, when you hear a voice from the heavens, or when I at least hear a voice from the heavens, I do not ignore it. Maybe you've also heard a voice. Maybe you've had a religious experience that changed who you are or the path you are on. Maybe you haven't. Maybe your journey has been quieter, calmer, simpler, more low-key. Maybe you want to hear a voice, have a vision experience, that intimate God moment, and yet you haven't. Maybe you've waited years, decades, even a lifetime, and still haven't heard it. Maybe you think it's too late to hear a voice. Or maybe you heard a voice a long time ago and decided to ignore it. Or maybe all of this just sounds like complete folly to you and you dismiss that kind of a God who intercedes in daily life. It's silly. Or maybe you're in the midst of being that grain of wheat that Jesus names in today's gospel reading. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Maybe it's never too late to hear a voice and change the direction of your life. Of course, my story keeps going. Discernment, prayer, seminary at Yale, ordination, a call to Chicago. And now I'm here with all of you at St. Philip's. I'm hoping I'm back at that hundred miles to go part of the journey. The part of the journey that is healing and teaching and praying and caring, being with all of you, loving all of you, serving with all of you, supporting all of you as you undoubtedly will also support me. Maybe that's where you are too. Or maybe, like Jesus in today's gospel reading, you're feeling the tension the need to rush, to be sure everything is done and in order, the feeling of anticipation, maybe even some anxiety and nervousness and inevitability. But wherever you are, I pray that you take comfort in knowing that Jesus has been there too and that God is with you now is with each and every one of us, no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, no matter who we think we need to be. God was with me every time my story changed directions, even if I didn't know it in the moment. I do know it now. God is always with each and every one of us all of the time. in the fear and anxiety in the anticipation, in the waiting, in the hope, in the joy, in the love. A voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Listen for that voice. Look for that presence. In the long journeys and the quick exits and the cruise control and the rapid changes, and again, no. Even if you don't hear that voice, God is still with you. God the Father, Jesus the Holy Spirit, God is with you. And I have to say this, just in case, 
if you do hear that voice, promise me you won't think it's just thunder. <laughs> Amen. Standing together, let us declare our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the holy church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Rob, our own bishop, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who do not yet believe and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, for those who are present and for those who are absent, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Philip and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, our God.
For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Remaining in place, let us exchange a sign of peace with one another. You may be seated. We have a few announcements that we want to pass along to you. Start with our vestry person of the day, Dana. If you want to come to the center, Dana, that way they can pick you up on the live stream. You don't want to break the camera. Good morning, St. Phillips. Good morning. What a great day. What a great time to be alive in, in Southport. I told you uh, this is an exciting time to be in St. Phillips. Uh, we have a lot of things going on, but first of all, welcome to Mother Lisa. <laughs> The other exciting thing going on right now is the building of the fellowship hall. As you can see, the, the ground is finally broken, the foundation's being poured, things are gonna start moving. The only thing is, with any kind of progress like this, there is gonna be some things that you have to uh, have for a little bit of patience with. Next Sunday, when you come to church, you may not be able to come up the sidewalk from Dry Street to the, uh, the Bell Tower Narthex, because it'll be a construction zone. So we will be meeting with, uh, within the church and trying to figure out uh, specifically with what will be happening at that time, how to get people in, so watch your bulletins for that. Um, the, uh, for those of you who brought in cards and, did not, brought in cards and letters but did not uh, deliver them to the, uh, the basket in the back, uh, Mother Lisa will be out in the Bell Tower Narthex with the basket out there. You can drop it off as you depart and, and welcome her. And the other thing is the, uh, the yellow uh, flyer is the flowers. The flowers are for Easter service, and the last time for that's the 29th, which is the Monday after Palm Sunday. With that, thank you very much. Thank you, Dana. I understand we do have a few visitors this morning. We welcome you to St. Philip's. Uh, this is your first Sunday with us, just that it is, as it is Mother Lisa's. If you are visiting with us, uh, please take time after the service to pause and introduce yourself uh, to Mother Lisa, especially to me. Mother Lisa's meeting everybody, but I'd like to meet you as a visitor uh, and talk with you just for a moment, if that's possible. Also, uh, we will be distributing communion in a little bit. At St. Philip's during this COVID experience, what we do is we ask you to remain in place, remain standing. If you wish to receive communion, just put your hands out like this, and the priest will come and place the communion wafer in your hand. Please leave your mask on during that. Once we've given you communion, we'll walk past you, and then you can remove your mask, consume, and then put your mask back on. We do not share the cup during this time frame, but hopefully one day we'll get out of this pandemic and be able to re-engage with the chalice as well. Finally, in your bulletin, we have this purple sheet. This is our version of your eye test to see how well you can read if you need glasses or you don't need glasses. Uh, but in, in all seriousness, this is the printed Lenten schedule, or Holy Week schedule. I invite you to put it on your refrigerator or someplace where you'll see the purple, and then you'll look for your glasses so you can see what's happening. <laughs> and plan to come to all the services that you would like to. We are also going to do our best to live stream all the services. So if you can't be here in person, they will be available to you uh, uh, digitally. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Please stand. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, you bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and repair with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemptional Father in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit. To be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. That the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. the gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Look with compassion, Lord, upon this your people, that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know you more fully and serve you with a more perfect will through Christ our Lord. Amen. This time I'd like to invite Mother Lisa to join me up front. Ricky, if you could bring me the microphone, please. The parish has a small presentation to make, and Tink and Steve are coming forward to do that. I think Tink has something to say. Uh, uh, on behalf of all of us, uh, the Parish Life Committee has put together a little basket to welcome you and Betty, Betty, Betty to uh, Southport and help you to explore North Carolina and Southport, and we're very glad you're here. Thank you. Yeah. Basket here, or should I carry it all for you? 